Hello everybody and this is a semi-continuation of that grenade series I had before. Uh, essentially I decided to add a different detonator because so I have this module so this is uh, the explosives right the modules for that and I was thinking about well I, if I can bundle it up into a bigger uh, bomb or I can actually s shrink it down to make some kind of booby trap for example if I what if I create a, like a laser activated sensor detonator and put it on top then I need to glue it to some kind of surface so I'll have this glue adhesive which if you spit on so you can stick it and then if you stick it then you get some kind of reaction that goes with the the liquid and you know it grows and you can stick it to a rock you can stick it to a tree and all that and then it kind of somebody passes by it gets activated and gets blown up uh, uh, this video is very shorter than my previous grand video because here I had more concise vision of what I'm going to design and it's just a smaller you know object in, in itself and again it's really cool it gives you a really cool ability to design stuff and then paint it on using you know high poly texture essentially so I think I th can later go and cycle through materials and see how it looks with the stuff that's been painted on top the texture will be a next video uh, this one only focus is f only focusing on the design and the form will be another ex extra video in the end uh, like the video number three because it's just uh, s such a different subject to talk about um, not really a form but a resin and yep let's get started oh yeah and this model is also available on Gumroad but I, I wanted to give it away for, for free but Gumroad now limits the file sizes that you can upload for free downloads so I have to sell it for one dollar so if you really want to get it just uh, you have to donate one dollar uh, but yeah that's a new Gumroad policy all right so I start with uh, just a cylinder which I created from one of the modules um, try to find some material so I decided to use this kind of hockey green uh, material not really hockey but just a green polymer plastic uh, soft plastic plastic material this particular concept got done way way faster than uh, anything else uh, compared to the previous video a lot due to the fact that I only kind of had a concept in my head and I, I did honestly made a little sketch on a on the paper like just a generic sketch and i've looked at a whole bunch of reference that was kind of re relevant to this so you can see i'm trying to taper the form and tapering is actually not a trivial task inside co 3d code so you can see i've used the post tool to push it out and then i you know well scale it down and then cut out the bottom so now i'm trying to i want to get the ribs out and well, essentially, that's a really common design feature of uh, modern military stuff. Uh, well, I mean, it's been a common feature for a long for a while. Uh, this type of kind of ribs for cheaper um, type of military equipment, really, really common. And so I'm trying to make the shape a bit more complicated, uh, adding this horizontal part and I can see I've got this little kind of marks uh, on top of that part uh, on top of the Camilo ring and I decided just to keep those like uh, tiny um, pro issues this kind of crisscross pattern I decided just to keep it there uh, because it kind of looked all right it looks like it looks like a defect of manufacturing you know if you have a manufactured uh, polymer and meanwhile I was talking I was also just doing this kind of tests of shapes and holes uh, and how they look right so I essentially I duplicated the original cone and scaled it down so now it's uh, inside that frame structure I'm trying to. I was still trying to find some interesting patterns, like I've um, done this pattern that's kind of connected to the ribs. But then I decided that okay, whatever. I'll just use it. I'll just do um, a round hole in the end. So again, trying to break the edges. But uh, again, I was afraid of over designing this whole thing, and I wanted to keep it pretty simple, as you would see some of the other landmines. They have pretty simple patterns, and they're not overdone. 
And uh, I think this particular color makes it look like a bit more piece of a Soviet tech, like Russian technology. And I, uh, and it's kind of an okay reference if you want to do it. I think uh, the green color is quite characteristic for, again, for Russian type technology. And in the end, I made it all blue. So I could make it more like uh, United Nations on NATO style you know coloring it definitely makes a huge difference the moment you, the moment you look at this uh, is it green um uh, detonator well at least how I, I looked at it it looked like a russian piece of technology or the moment i made it blue so it looked like a, a nato piece of technology so yeah coloring makes a huge difference and i made decided to change the shape a little bit make it like a cylinder and it's uh yeah, I'm not sure if it was a good decision. And I wanted to break the symmetry because I have so many symmetrical parts there. So we say okay, there'll be um a few buttons on the side to activate this thing, right? And if you like press one button uh, one in particular order, uh you can activate the whole detonator and, and turn on the laser on and for to do that well so i've created this political little block that i'm placing in in the place of one of the ribs and then i am going to hide that piece uh, no not that one so i'm doing the hole for the laser and i'm playing around with the shape of this particular part and uh, i ended up doing a super simple shape just a block really nothing nothing there and then I'm uh, hiding that rib and uh, yeah, just playing around, making it bigger. Now I want to combine it all together uh, with the main piece. Well, not now exactly, but pretty soon. So I just decided to tape it at least a little bit, just not to make it too uh to square and again playing around the shapes uh trying different uh, angles and designs of what cuts and uh, using my favorite box side to unhide the buttons okay so those are the buttons and again trying trying to squish everything else inside scale it down to see if it looks good and i didn't and at least in my opinion and then i decided to lift it up a little bit so it's got a bit of a you know bump over the over the whole thing and i push it in all right And just doing the holes for the buttons so they'll fit in a bit more organically. And just doing some you know, indents at the top to make it, I don't know, more like just some type of a practical design uh, idea. I'm just eyeballing it, you know, no, no real um, precision there. But for something like that, it's okay, in my opinion, at least. All right, so combine all of those parts together. So now it's just one big piece, all solid. And I found out that you can see on the left side of the button, you know, activator, or whatever, there is actually a hole between the between that and the, um, the piece. So I had to undo everything and go and unhide that little thing from that angle. Then I recombine everything again. Just because I couldn't fix it any other way that other than going backwards and undoing all everything and, and hiding a particular bit. All right, doing a split. So I was thinking about okay, there'll be like a couple of tool. This should be something that's uh, you know segmented. Or... And I'm doing. I wanted to add the circles around, and to do that, essentially, I'm turning on the symmetry. But if I do the symmetry card, then I, you know. 
I cut everything. So I had to hide this, the part of the model I didn't want to cut through using the symmetry, and that was essentially those buttons. And then I did the unhide tool. But when I did the unhide tool, I turned out that I had some uh, hidden po hidden voxels there. So I hit the delete all hidden, and then hit everything again, and then did the split tool. And that way, in that way, I got all the circles in place, uh, all readily symmetrical, and you know. So this constant thought process of what's um, you know, I mean, it's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty logical. You know, you think, okay, if I want to do that, I need to hide this, and all that. So it's fairly logical in many cases. So and then I did this to circles. They essentially will be screws later. And the one thing I didn't do is I should have cut the whole thing in half as well at the bottom. Uh, that would have made some quite a bit of sense, like uh, lower part and higher part, just right in the middle, main ring. And I'm trying to find maybe if I add this particular uh, cone here and there, I might get a more interesting design. And I decided to combine that particular cone, and that I think started to look a little bit better. Okay, so I'm doing the laser cut, uh, the laser hole. And again, I'm eyeballing it pretty much. And every time when I do a hide, I then go and unhide from the side. All right, so I use, just use the button as my laser side. And no, it's pretty stylized, but just for the placeholder. And I use this as a glass, so I made it a little bit bigger and thicker, so that top orange piece. <coughs> Okay, just rearranging the buttons. I thought they were too big. And this piece in particular is uh, going to be transparent. All right, so I'm doing a test render just out of curiosity how it looks. And if you saw it, it's a little bit soft and soft because essentially I had my DOF on. on and I do degree, you can see it on the right. It's been on, and you should check your own settings there as well. By default, I think it's on, so it gives you a bit too much softness to the whole model. And just Playing around with the hole size and um, depth and all that, checking how to combine it all. The glass, I can't really render the glass as well inside 3D code, and I was using the, the default. Um, I actually, just right now, activated this kind of transparency material because I can see through from the side. If I go and I want to unhide from the side view, then I can see some volumes inside rather than just uh, blind guessing and unhiding from in a blind position, which I usually do because I, I know I know approximately where I'm hiding and I, I just hide from the side. It's uh, for me, it's faster than using like a depth uh, hide because if you're using like depths for hiding stuff, usually you put something like a three units and then you hide it and it doesn't look right. So you change it to one unit, you hide it, it doesn't look right. So it's kind of too much work to change stuff. So I usually hide it at the full length, uh, full depth, and then I hide from the side to correct my depths to make it less you know, deep and all that. All right. So I didn't have any good ideas about the circles on the top. So all, all the, the six circles, they just like, they have maybe the same type of sensors as well. Yeah, like um, essentially the senses. So right here, I've added, I wanted to do a shell for the whole thing. So I wanted to add some holes to the to the, to the shell. 
Uh, so it'll be like some kind of ventilation hole. So there's maybe some kind of sensor that heats up and you need a few holes to um, ventilate it and cool it down. So I used the shell mod, like a right click, create a shell out of the object. I, in the end, I actually didn't like how it created the shell because it was way too thick. And if I made it too thin, then I ran into troubles. In the end, I just decided to manually hide some parts and then to, uh, so hide the volume inside and then continue on hiding from the sides, cutting through that volume. You know, hopefully that makes sense. I felt like this uh, buttons were way too bland and I decided to put at least something there, like uh, just something like even a little indent like that. Looks good. I think here it was where I decided to change the material, maybe not. So just looking around, thinking about the whole object and what to do next. And I also was thinking about, uh, you know, applying noise and see seeing how it looks. If you apply this type of noise, it definitely changes the material. It becomes more like a, like a wall material, you know, you can see. Um, or if it's a steel material painted with this kind of paint, cheap paint, going to give you this type of a bump, bumpiness. So I decided that's not a good one, uh, not a good noise at all. And here, a little jump. I think I was just playing around with the materials, and I essentially assigned this blue material to it. And I uh, was looking at different design possibilities. And here I just doing, well, essentially I was thinking about this, how do we attach the, how do you operate this mine? And I was decided that there should be some kind of adhesive at, at the bottom of the, of the mine. Uh, and uh, essentially, you like activated maybe with water, and then and essentially it became like a speed and stick. It, and you speed on it, it starts to form up, and you can uh, attach it, put it on a wall or 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 tree or stone. And this is essentially the sticker, super thin mesh. And then I turn just getting out a little ton. And I put a volume material there, like a transparency, a little bit of that. Right, so I have some redundant layers there that I'm just deleting right now. And uh, just we're grouping the stuff together so it's a bit more understandable. And I do not rename all, all layers, but I do rename certain layers that are really important, like a right side, so I, it's easier to find it. Oh, I mean, also, it's tricky for me to get that right side by just cl uh, clicking A all the time, you know, A to pick up an object. I, ha I have to have a better, you know, navigation system, so I have to name it correctly. This is one of the examples I was creating a new material. And I decided to put a laser a bit, bit lower than it is. And another indent around. And I'm not sure why I'm, I'm doing these holes again, but I might have lost something along the way. And I have to redo it. So it's just a test render to see how it looks. But definitely when it come to come to texturing, it makes this whole thing alive. And I'm just uh, right here, I'm just adding some uh, brush strokes on top of the gum at the bottom. 
to edit to make it more uh, no, soft to make it look softer and more like a gum or resin so then I yeah, cut everything out under the sticker and uh, just looking for material for it All right, I'm quite near in the end, so most of the stuff is done. Uh, just place the detonator a bit closer to the top of the mo modules. Uh, I was thinking that maybe I have too many modules here. Okay, so you see, I'm deleting the some of the like uh, critical box layers, uh, critical backup box layers that would have helped me to re restore some shapes if I need to. And I decided to make it smaller overall, so I just, uh, just moved away, moved one module away, and pushed push it up, so it's like a bit more mobile, a little thin. And that's really it. So this particular module uh, or project is available on Gumroad. I have to sell it for one dollar because Gumroad no longer allows you to put out free big files. And uh, for texturing part, just. Um, check the next video.